an interstellar object is baffling astronomers with its bizarre chemistry. It's releasing nickel gas without iron, and its chemical output is accelerating far faster than our models predict. Combined with unusual carbon dioxide and steeply rising cyanide, its behavior is unlike any comet we've ever seen. Now, a rare Mars flyby gives us a second chance to solve a mystery. Is it an exotic natural object? Or something else entirely? Scientists have just confirmed that 3I Atlas is spewing out carbon dioxide at extraordinary rates, with CO2 dominating its coma at a ratio of about 8 to 1 over water. This third confirmed interstellar visitor is unlike any comet we've studied before, and the James Webb Space Telescope's spectroscopy, at 3.32 astronomical units from the Sun, has revealed a chemical composition that challenges what we know about objects from beyond our solar system. The discovery came on July 1, 2025, when the Atlas Survey in Chile spotted this hyperbolic traveller. Its trajectory immediately marked it as interstellar, approaching from the general direction of Sagittarius. Unlike typical comets that orbit our Sun, 3I Atlas follows a retrograde path inclined about 175 degrees to the ecliptic, just 5 degrees off the plane where planets orbit. Spherex measurements taken in early August 2025 detected a massive carbon dioxide coma stretching about 348,000 kilometers across, at roughly 470 million kilometers from the Sun. The comet was already releasing approximately 9.4 times 10 to the 26th CO2 molecules every second. That translates to about 70 kilograms of carbon dioxide per second while water production remained below 4.5 kilograms per second based on the upper detection limits. The James Webb Space Telescope's NIRSPEC instrument provided the most detailed compositional analysis. At 3.32 astronomical units from the Sun, JWST confirmed the CO2 to water mixing ratio at 8.0 plus or minus 1.0, among the highest ever recorded for any comet. The spectrum also revealed traces of carbon monoxide, carbonyl sulfide, water ice, and dust particles mixed throughout the coma. This carbon dioxide dominance sets 3I Atlas apart from both solar system comets and the previous interstellar visitors. Most comets we observe are water-dominated, with CO2 playing a secondary role. Even comets from the outer reaches of our solar system rarely show such extreme carbon dioxide enrichment. The SphereX team's measurements show that more than 99% of the near-infrared continuum flux comes from coma dust, rather than the nucleus itself. The nucleus remains a mystery. Hubble Space Telescope imaging from July 21, 2025, couldn't resolve the actual body. Instead, Hubble constrained its size to somewhere between 0.32 and 5.6 kilometers in diameter. The nucleus might be as small as a few hundred meters across, hidden within the bright dust coma that dominates our observations. Swift's ultraviolet optical telescope added another piece to the puzzle by detecting hydroxyl emissions around 3.51 astronomical units from the Sun. These OH emissions indicate water production at roughly 1.35 times 10 to the 27th molecules per second, or about 40 kilograms per second. However, the SWIFT team emphasizes that this estimate depends strongly on assumptions about dust reddening in the coma. The most unusual chemical signatures come from ground-based spectroscopy. The Very Large Telescope's X-Shooter and UVES instruments tracked the comet from 4.4 to 2.85 astronomical units and found something remarkable. Nickel emission lines appeared clearly in the spectra, but iron remained undetected near 2.85 astronomical units, the nickel production, rate reached about 4.7 times 10 to the 22nd atoms per second, while cyanide radical production hit about 4.1 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per second. What makes these detections particularly strange is how rapidly production increased as the comet approached the Sun. Nickel production scaled with heliocentric distance to the negative 8.43 power, while CN scaled to the negative 9.38 power. These steep increases don't match simple ice sublimation models. Instead, researchers propose these gases might be released through low activation energy processes,
from dust grains, possibly through photon-stimulated desorption or the breakdown of nickel-bearing organic compounds. The trajectory analysis confirms 3I Atlas poses no threat to Earth. Its closest approach to our planet will be about 1.6 to 1.8 astronomical units according to NASA guidance. The comet follows a hyperbolic path that will bring it to perihelion on October 29, 2025 at approximately 11.34 to 11.44 terrestrial time. At perihelion, it will be about 1.356 astronomical units from the Sun, just inside Mars's orbit. Before reaching perihelion, 3I Atlas will make its closest approach to Mars on October 3rd, 2025. The comet will pass within roughly 28 to 30 million kilometers of the red planet. Space agencies have identified this as a prime observation opportunity. Mars orbiters and other spacecraft in the inner solar system may attempt to capture images and spectra during this flyby. The retrograde orbit adds complexity to observation planning. While most solar system objects move in the same direction as Earth's orbit, 3I Atlas travels backwards through the ecliptic plane. During perihelion in late October, Earth will be positioned on the far side of the Sun, limiting ground-based observations at that critical moment. The compositional data raises fundamental questions about where this object formed. The extreme CO2 enrichment suggests formation in a very cold environment where carbon dioxide ice could dominate over water ice. In our solar system, such conditions exist only in the outermost regions, far beyond Neptune. If 3I Atlas formed in another star system, it might have originated in an analogous cold zone, or perhaps in an environment with fundamentally different chemistry than our solar nebula. Some researchers have proposed speculative interpretations about the object's nature, including hypotheses about artificial origins based on its trajectory alignment with the ecliptic plane. These ideas remain unconfirmed hypotheses and are actively debated in the scientific community. The compositional data from multiple independent observations supports a natural origin, though an unusual one. The detection methods themselves showcase modern astronomy's capabilities. JWST's infrared spectroscopy can identify specific molecules through their characteristic absorption and emission features. SphereX maps extended gas distributions across hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Ground-based telescopes track production rates as they change with solar heating. Each instrument adds a piece to our understanding. The nickel detection without corresponding iron is particularly puzzling. In typical comets, these metals appear together when present at all. The VLT team suggests the nickel might be bound in specific organic molecules that release it preferentially. The steep increase in production with decreasing heliocentric distance points to a release mechanism more complex than simple thermal sublimation. As 3I Atlas continues its approach, the observation windows are narrowing. The Mars flyby on October 3rd represents our best chance for close-range spacecraft observations. Ground-based telescopes will continue monitoring until perihelion, though the Sun's position will create challenges in late October. After perihelion, the comet will rapidly recede, eventually returning to interstellar space on a path it will never repeat. The water detection by Swift adds nuance to the CO2-dominated picture. While carbon dioxide clearly dominates, water is present and actively sublimating. The ratio of about 8 to 1 CO2 to water represents an extreme end of cometary compositions. Even if the water production estimates prove higher than Swift's measurements suggest, the fundamental CO2 dominance remains clear. SphereX's measurement of the coma size, 348,000 kilometers across, demonstrates how active this small body has become even at considerable distance from the Sun. For context, that's nearly the distance from Earth to the Moon. The vast cloud of carbon dioxide molecules streams away from a nucleus that might be just a few hundred meters to a few kilometers wide. The trajectory data confirms the interstellar classification beyond doubt. The hyperbolic orbit means 3I Atlas is not gravitationally bound to our Sun. It entered the solar system from interstellar space and will exit again after perihelion. The retrograde motion and high inclination further distinguish it from solar system comets. 
October 29th's perihelion, at 1.356 astronomical units, places the comet just inside Mars's orbital distance. The timing between 11.34 and 11.44 terrestrial time provides a precise target for observation campaigns. However, Earth's position on the opposite side of the Sun will prevent optimal viewing from ground-based telescopes at that exact moment. The dust-dominated infrared flux, with over 99% coming from coma particles rather than the nucleus, explains why determining the true size remains so difficult. Hubble's constraints suggest a small body, possibly under a kilometer, but the bright dust envelope prevents direct imaging of the nucleus itself. Future observations might tighten these constraints, though the opportunity window is limited. The chemical complexity revealed by multiple telescopes paints a picture of an object unlike anything in our solar system's comet population. The CO2 dominance, the nickel without iron, the steep production rate scaling, and the massive dust production all point to unique formation conditions or evolutionary history. Each observation adds detail to this emerging portrait of our third confirmed interstellar visitor. As 3i Atlas approaches its closest point to the Sun, it carries information about conditions in another star system. The extreme carbon dioxide enrichment might reflect the chemistry of its birth environment. The unusual metal content could trace processes we haven't observed in solar system comets. Every spectrum and image helps decode these messages from interstellar space. The safe, distant trajectory ensures Earth faces no danger while providing multiple observation opportunities. The October 3rd Mars approach and October 29th perihelion mark the key dates for intensive study. After these encounters, 3i Atlas will begin its journey back to interstellar space, taking its secrets with it unless we can unlock them in these crucial weeks of observation.